what message do you have for teens navigating the world today? And what message do you have for the parents and educators of those kids? Great question. Well, I would say a few things if I could message. So I don't say them succinctly. Um, the first message I would show for teens, I would say to me, these are, these are things I learned when I was younger or I learned later in life and I wish I'd known when I was younger, you know? So one is you matter, get on your own side. It doesn't mean to be arrogant or a jerk. I'm cleaning up my language for public consumption here. Uh, you know, get, but get on your own side before yourself. It's, I've been a long time therapist. It's startling Adam, how few people, how, how many people are not on their own side. They're a friend to others, but they're not a friend to themselves. They're harsh to themselves or indifferent to their own needs. They're not on their own side. They're not for themselves. That's really important. That was centrally important for me, dealing with the crud I had to deal with growing up. Um, second is to play the long game. Take the long view. You're going to be here. Human, humanity's going to be here. We're doing all kinds of stupid stuff to the planet, but there are going to still be people here in 100 years, 10,000 years. We've been here for 300,000 years. We're tough critters. There is a future for you. So take the long view. You know, put this week's hassle or this hour's hassle into larger perspective, including, this is a key point, realizing that the little things you do each day to develop yourself, to avoid disaster, uh, of one kind or another, physically, uh, don't drive with, don't go in a car with someone who's drunk, da -da. Um, you know, but more importantly, the things you do each day that are small to develop yourself will add up over the long haul. And <clears throat> a thing that I wish I had known when I was younger is to realize that the costs of building a platform for your life are spread out over the next 50 years. So, uh, sucking it up to spend an extra half hour to an hour a day on your schoolwork, if only to get those people off your back, so then you can really pursue your own agenda. Uh, or spending that extra time in college or in an apprenticeship with someone or really learning an important skill, mastering some body of content, you know, learning something important, getting good at something important, the cost of doing that, you know, time it takes, sometimes the money it takes with school debt, things like that. The cost of that gets spread out over 50 years. But the benefits of developing yourself in that way, of building this platform for, to launch pad as a launch pad for the rest of your life, the benefits of that accumulate exponentially over the next 50 years. So the takeaway from that is to not be short-sighted, but in fact, to take the long view and realize that investing in yourself is a really, really smart thing to do long term, even if it's a pain in the neck for a few years when you're young. That was a really useful thing. I think the last thing I would just say uh, is to focus your career on the center of three circles. What do you love doing? What are you talented at? And what do you care about? If you think about what's at the intersection of those three circles, loves, talents, and values, the rest is just details. If you, you know, root your occupation, your career, whatever it might be, at the center of those three circles, uh, you're gonna be good, <laughs> whatever the details might be. And yeah, maximize your earnings, you know, hang out with cool people, uh, you know, live in a part of the country you really care about, but as long as you're centered in the intersection of those three circles, you're going to be gold. Cool. I'll just say that. And then for parents, oh boy, don't be annoying. Uh, be careful with your anger. Almost all my mistakes as a parent began with my anger of one kind or another. And I'm a pretty chill guy and still, you know, you can get irritated. So, you know, don't be annoying. Don't be intrusive. Uh, my personal advice to parents is to use a metaphor to have to give kids a really big pasture with real fences. In other words, what I mean is to realize there's certain things where as a parent, you do come in with authority and say, you know, it's a safety issue that, that trumps your autonomy. All right. Um, but as parents, uh, as long as your safety concerns are addressed, give your kids room to breathe. 
don't be invasive. Don't be over controlling, you know, respect them, trust them. Uh, so I would say that. And um, I think, I think that's enough blather for now. Uh, I'll just say one last thing. It's kind of a big perspective and it goes back to that weird thing about Mars and all the rest of that. You know, when you, the fact is that this universe is just bubbled into being out of seemingly nothing. What the heck? Right? If, if we're not gobsmacked with grateful awe, we're not paying attention. What? There are two trillion galaxies. We're just one galaxy with a hundred billion stars in one little dinky planet swirling around a mediocre sun yeah. off to the side. What? And here we are, you know, this life is like a vast park. It's like a vast game board and it's got crud in it. It's got swamps. It's got monsters, but it's also got gorgeous meadows, wonderful waves to surf, all kinds of neat things to do and explore and learn. And to me, it's so useful to appreciate the opportunity of a human life, to realize I'm not a bug, I'm not a fruit fly, I'm not literally being chewed on by some little tadpole in the pond I'm in. You know, I read a science article yesterday about that kind of stuff. Um, I'm full of opportunity. Most people in the modern world live better than kings and queens did 100 years ago. And it's not to use this, to say this, to ignore the problems, but it's to relate to life and your own life, the life you're going to have, as this incredible opportunity. Make the most of it, you know, and have a good time along the way. That's my advice.